All right, I'm sick of MCP2. I'm sick of Agentic AI also. However, uh, what is MCP and why does it matter for industry take zero? All right, so I've been inundated with these questions about MCP. By now, you must know that my position is you must know MCP, you must know MCP, you must know MCP in order to work in this industry going forward, okay? Whether you're an engineer or whether you're gonna work on a plant four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what is MCP for industry. You know, we're doing this, we're getting ready to do a REST API workshop on January or uh, September 29 and 30. The second workshop of three workshops, we did the first one, which was an introduction to MCP in July. We're doing REST API in this month. And then in November, I'm gonna be doing advanced MCP with agent to agent for industry. And so for Monday's session, we put together this video for you guys. So. On Monday, you guys are gonna be learning about this and its relationship to this, all right? So, but what is MCP and why does it matter for industry? Hopefully by the time we're done here, you're gonna understand the basics of how MCP works. And if you work in a manufacturing facility, you're gonna understand kind of how it's gonna be. All right, so there's been a lot of announcements. You know, last week at ICC, Inductive Automation said that they're going to have MC, they're having MCP module in ignition. Well, okay. You might know that MCP is Model Context Protocol, which is basically an API for it, for agentic AI. It's an API for agents. REST API is an API for human beings. But most of you probably don't understand like what does supporting MCP actually mean? So there's basically two primary applications for Model Context Protocol right now in industry. Application number one is I have a piece of software and I'm gonna build an MCP server inside my software that's gonna let an agent outside that software or inside that software interact with the API in the software. Because if you look at software development, what is the software stack? You have backend, you have API, and you have UI. Use case number one is that I'm gonna build an, an MCP server off the side of this API that's gonna let an agent it's gonna let an agent interact with the software. So I could do something like tell the agent, add a new asset of this type using this type of tag and make sure you configure the model number of the device to this number. And the agent will be able to interact with the API over here, impact the back end, which is the ORM or the master data model, so that when the human being is interacting with the UI, they see that new asset, okay? That's use case number one. That's kind of scary, okay? Uh, the reason that's scary is we don't really want to give artificial intelligence the ability to interact with um, the platforms that are interacting with hardware on our plant floor. However, there is a place for that, okay? And uh, But I don't think that's the predominant application going forward. Application number two is we're going to build, and this is the more predominant, we're going to build MCP servers so MCP servers can enter agents, make it so the agents can interact with our data, okay, through the same software, right? So application number one is we have an MCP server that allows us to use an agent to help us build applications and enter it, you know, add tags, build windows, et cetera, et cetera. Application number two is using an MCP server that gives agents the ability to interact with our data and answer questions, right? So in a plant, you may, we may have the same problem. And I actually have a, like a flow diagram that I created for you guys that I'll, we'll link an artifact that will link the description of this video. But the business question, right, is what production line is performing worst and why? That's a, that's a business problem. A supervisor might want to know what production line is performing worst and why. All right, using the traditional model where I have a REST API, I have databases, I have OPC servers, a human being would have to build a specific integration to automate that process. That is, a human being would have to write a piece of software that interacts, let's say we're gonna do it through REST, it's gonna interact with the API in a noun, verb, adjective mode, all right? So we're gonna to connect to the resource machine, which is the noun. We're gonna use the method get, which is the verb, and we're gonna pass in parameters where status equals active and whatever other argument. And what's gonna return is a result set that we're then gonna write logic to process, okay? We have to write this big, long integration that goes and gets the active production lines where the, where the lines are active, and then we have to write logic that keeps hitting the API in order um, to ultimately spit out which line is performing the worst and why. The reason that doesn't exist in plants today, the reason you can't just go get me the line that's performing the worst and why is because that's a massive amount of engineering. That's why you don't have it in your plant, okay? 
MCP servers give us the ability to hook an agent into a server and we can just ask the agent any question we want to ask it. Give me which line is performing the worst and why. And the MCP server gives the agent to go, okay, well, what tools are available to me? What's the context of those tools? And then the agent reasons through all the steps that we would normally have to write manually. A developer would have to write manually. The only time we're doing it on this side, the REST API side, is when there's some massive high value target and you don't mind spending $100,000 on an engineer to build you an integration that may or may not work. Rather, you would spend whatever X to get to enable an MCP server into your infrastructure. And, then the, and, that, and that applies to a hundred use cases instead of the one integration and one use case, right? What are the fundamental differences between a REST API and an MCP server that makes this possible? First off, a REST API is an API for human beings, okay? It is, it is written in a way that human beings understand. It uses nouns, nouns, verbs, and adjectives, all right? Resources, methods, and parameters, okay? There is a URL that you go to, and then you pass in the resource you want to use, the method that you want to use, and then pass in the parameters, and then the URL returns to you the result set that's in the form of a JSON, and it has basically the information that you want. You would then parse that in your code, and then, you, and then depending upon what it returned, you would have conditions. If it returns this, then do this next thing. If it returns this, then do that thing. Obviously, the logic for which production line is performing worse than why is going to be very, very long, and it's going to have many, many, many permutations, okay? That is depending upon all the possible conditions in your code. You're going to have to hit this API many, many times, and every time you hit it, you're going to have to process that data. You're going to have to write code that processes. And you have to do it before you ever want to ask the question, all right? An MCP server, instead of a URL, it has a studio, an STDIO server, okay? The agent, you, your Claude desktop, for example, or your ChatGPT desktop, has a configuration to connect to this MCP server. And when you ask the question, the natural language question, which line is performing worst and why, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the list of tools. So we have tools, resources, and context. It's going to look at the list of tools that are available on that MCP server, and it's going to reason. Can I use those tools to figure out which line is performing the worst and why? Okay? And the resources and the context are resources are what we pass in and consume, and context is what is returned to us so that the agent can then further reason. What we get at the end of this is the agent telling us line four is wor working the worst and here, here's the reasons why it's not working the best. Here's what I've gotten from the data I've pulled. So a tool is a function, something like get machine state. Okay, the resources are the data. So production where line four, uh, give, me, uh, give me line four and metrics, that's what it's going to return back. Context is the meaning, the rules, the um, relationships, and the targets. And so we might, the, the agent, one step that the agent might use with the MCP server is get machine status where line equals four and context equals something. How would it get line equals four? Because the first thing it would do is use a tool to say, uh, give me OEE for all the lines. And then it's going to see the one with the lowest OEE. Then it's going to go get the machine status. And then it might go get the machine downtime. And then it might get, get the machine quality. And then from there, it might go get me the result of the quality inspection of this. It literally reasons through. The agent reasons through. And it's using the MCP server to know which step to take next based on the information the server is serving out. Okay. That's what MCP actually is in practice. That's how it's being used on the plant floor. But here's the, the, the most important caveat. This back end, this API right here that helps us access the back end. In most software today, there's a, there's a RESTful API inside the software. If this is, uh, say, um, uh, enter, you know, Tatsos Frameworks, the API is RESTful, right? It's basically using REST uh, as part of the API to access the back end. One of the things that we can do to build an MCP server, and this is what's actually happening, is software developers, what they're doing is they're taking their REST APIs, the resource method parameters, okay? And they are mapping that to tools, resources, context. So for every method in a resource, we're going to have a tool that the agent can access. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, that's how we are moving from the RESTful API world where everything has to be done manually and the human beings got to do the, the logic and then write all the code in order to, to determine which line is performing worse and why to 
we're basically building hooks for Agentic AI to plug into so that it can naturally reason through the process. And as the MCP server gets better and the models used to train the agents gets better, the way that the agent reasons through gets better. Every single, once I write an automation in here that goes through the RESTful API, it will process exactly the same way every single time. It will not get better. It's not gonna get any better. This is gonna get better over time. I could build an, an MCP server today where my tools never change, my resources cha never change, my context never change. But what does change is the model that's running the agent. The agent will get better at reasoning its way through the steps to give us the answer to our question, which is which line is running worst and why. Eventually, we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna be able to say, I'm the supervisor in this area in our facility, review my email, review my calendar, review the status of the operations, and give me my, the top 10 things I need to focus on before 10 a.m. this morning. And an agent will be able to do all that. Why? Because we have, MC, we have MCP servers that hook into our email. We have MCP servers that hook into our calendars. If you think MCP is not important, you are a fool. <laughs> You're an absolute fool. And now you know why in April I went to Prague and I said, you must know MCP, you must know MCP, you must know MCP. We're gonna be learning this. Annabelle Velarde is gonna be going through, you're gonna be learning how to build APIs. You're gonna be, if you're not fluent in APIs and you wanna become really fluent in MCP, it's very important to understand, to become fluent in APIs first because there's gonna be a one-to-one -one relationship between the resource method parameters that we use to pass into our URL to get our results set and what an agent is gonna be using to reason through. And if you're using things like Ignition, Ignition's MCP module is gonna give you the ability to build your own tools and, and hook hook agents into your Ignition projects through tools you build inside the Ignition Designer. So the reason the REST API workshop is so important, or at least understanding REST API, I guess the, the workshop itself is not important, but learning this is important. The reason we're doing that workshop, the reason we're doing this, these MCP workshops is for that reason, because MCP matters. MCP is gonna be the foundation. MCP and agent to agent, which is a separate protocol that gives this agent to talk to other agents, MCP gives agents the ability to talk to software. Agent to agent is giving the agent the ability to talk to other agents so that we can offload, we could load balance the, the workloads. So I could have one agent that's working with many agents to work through the reasoning, okay? But they're gonna be using MCP for servers to talk to serv uh, software and infrastructure. Okay, that's it. All right, like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.